Hi everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to Yuzu Custom. Today's video is going to be the making of this little number. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. Starting with the fabric, this is a scuba crepe. It has stretch in both directions, a good bit of structure to it though as well, a nice texture on one side and super smooth on the underside. And then for lining the flounces, I have just this standard acetate in this lovely purple colour. And on to the cutting out. These are my two pattern pieces for my front, a little notch at the bust point on both pieces and one at the centre of the neck. I have two layers of fabric underneath the bottom piece and one layer of fabric on the fold underneath the top. So that's that done. And now for the back, same thing here again, two pattern pieces. I have two layers of fabric underneath both pieces, a little notch to indicate the bottom of my zip and a notch at the centre of the back on both pieces. So that's my back all cut out. And this pattern is self-drafted. I've already shown how to draft princess seams, also how to draft a flounce. I shall leave both those videos linked below. So now to join these pieces together at the shoulder seam. So firstly, I'm going to join my center back pieces with my center front. So just laying my front over my back pieces, right sides together and pinning those shoulder seams and ready to stitch. Stitching here at my one centimeter seam alliance, back stitching at the start and the end. So that's how that looks. And I'll just finish off that edge on the overlocker and give it a bit of a press. And this is how it looks. So now that these pieces are joined together, I can work on the flights. So my fabric underneath this pattern piece is on the fold and I'm cutting this out twice. I have a little notch at the centre of the flounce on both sides. And there you see my second piece. And now for the lining, exactly the same thing here again. So same little notches and I cut this piece twice. So now to join my lining to my outer fabric. So I'm just laying that lining right sides together with the outer, lining up those notches you see me clip and pinning. And ready to stitch. So back stitching to start at my one centimeter seam alliance. Taking this nice and easy, trying to follow that curve the whole way around. stitching to finish. So that's how that looks. So now I just need to snip that curve and give it a bit of a press. So I'm just folding the fabric at its edge along the seam alliance and snipping out a little triangle. And I'm going to do that the whole way around and once it's all done this is how it looks. So now to press. So I want to press the lining away from the outer fabric but I want to make sure that it's butted up against that trim seam alliance in underneath. So you'll see that in a second. And there's that seam alliance butted up against the lining. So I just finished that off camera and now I'm ready to understitch. So I'm stitching here right through the lining and that seam alliance in underneath and I'm about a millimetre or two away from the red fabric and all this understitching is going to do is help that lining to stay in underneath and not roll too much to the outside. Using a little bit of a longer stitch length here, all of which will be listed in the description box below. Back stitching to finish. 
so that's how that looks. So I just need to turn that lining to the inside and give it a bit of a press, which I've done off camera. And this is how it looks, nice and neat. So now before I can add this piece to the dress, I just want to join the lining and the outer fabric together along that inner curve. So I've just pinned and stitching here, just within my one centimeter seam allowance. And this will just make the next step much easier. So that's how that looks. So that's the flounce all fully prepped and ready to be added to the dress. So I'm just lining it up here, right sides together with the dress, making sure those notches you see me clip earlier are lined up with the shoulder seam, pinning, and then lining that inner flounce edge along the front and the back, pinning the whole way along and ready to stitch. So back stitching at the start. Again, I'm stitching here within my seam allowance. I'm just wanting to tack this on for now. Again, this will make the next step much easier. Back stitching at the end. So that's my flounce all tacked into place. And that's how that looks. It's from the inside. And from the out. So happy with that. So now that that's done, I'm ready to add my side pieces. So I have a side front and a side back, which I'm going to line up right sides together at the shoulder. Pin and ready to stitch. Back stitching at the start at my one centimeter seam allowance and back stitching at the end. So that's that done. Off camera, I've tidied up that edge on the overlocker and given it a bit of a press. So you can see that here. And now that that's done, I'm ready to add my front and back to these side pieces. So you can see how the whole thing looks here. That's running from the hem of the front right the whole way down to the hem of the back. So I'm going to join together the side pieces to the front and back piece. So just laying those side pieces over the front and back right sides together, sandwiching my flights in between, lining up the shoulder seam first, then lining up those notches you seen me clip earlier. And I'll finish that pinning off camera. And this is how it looks. And ready to stitch. Back stitching at the start. At my one centimeter seam allowance. Starting at the hem of the front the whole way up over the top of the flounce, over the shoulder seam. The whole way down to the hem at the back. Back stitching to finish. So that's how that looks. And of course I've done exactly the same on the other side. So you can see that here. I finished off those edges and given the whole thing a nice press. So that's my flounce all stitched nicely into that princess seam. So now that that's done, I'm ready to close up the neck and armholes. So for that, I've decided to use a facing. So this is my front piece. My fabric underneath is on the fold. I have one little notch at the center of the neck. And then for my back, two layers of fabric underneath this one. So that's those all cut out. 
So now to join these together at the shoulder. So laying my front over my back pieces, right sides together and pinning those shoulder seams and stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start and back stitching at the end. So that's that done. And I've just finished off those edges and given those seams a good press. And while I was at the overlocker, I've also just finished off those bottom edges just to tidy them up. And now to join the facing to the dress at the neck initially. So lining the neckline of the facing up with the neckline of the dress, right sides together, lining up the shoulder seams, lining up those notches at the centre front and pinning and ready to stitch. Back stitching at the start, at my one centimetre seam allowance, starting at the centre back, up over the shoulder, the whole way down to the centre front, pivoting and repeating for the other side. Back stitching to finish. So that's how that looks. And off camera, I've just trimmed that seam allowance down just in exactly the same way as I did the flounce earlier. I've snipped into my V at the center front. I've pressed the facing away from the dress and now I'm ready to understitch. Just in exactly the same way as I did the flounce earlier. So stitching through the facing fabric and that trim seam allowance in underneath. Just about a millimetre or two away from the seam you've just seen me sew. Back stitching to start. And back stitching to finish. So that's how that looks. Nice and neat and tidy. And off camera I've given the whole thing a good press. And now that that's done, I'm ready to close up the armholes. So my bodice and facing are currently wrong sides together. And in order for me to sew them up, I need them to be right sides together. So just pulling that facing piece out from underneath, rolling up my flounce so that it's out of the way of the armhole, laying my facing right sides together now with the armhole, and pinning. making sure that my flounce is well out of the way and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start at my one centimeter seam allowance, taking it nice and easy here the whole way along those beautiful curves and back stitching to finish. So that's how that looks. So again, I just need to trim down that seam allowance and turn the whole thing right side out. So I've trimmed off camera, again in exactly the same way as I did previous. And now to turn everything right side out, I'm just popping my hand in through the facing, grabbing the back of the dress and pulling it all through the shoulder. It's so doing exactly the same thing here again. So putting my hand in between the facing and the front and pulling the back through the shoulder. And once it's had a nice press, this is how it looks. Super neat and tidy, love this. So now that that's done, I'm ready to close up my side seams. So I'm just pulling those facing pieces up from the bodice lining up my side seams the whole way down and pinning and ready to stitch. So starting at the facing with the back stitch at my one centimeter seam allowance the whole way down that side seam. Back stitching to finish and of course I do exactly the same to the other side. 
So I just need to finish off that seam, give it a nice press, and this is how it looks. And just to help my facing line nice and flat at those side seams, I've just trimmed that join there. And now that that's done, I'm ready to close up my centre back. So just laying one side over the other, right sides together, and just like the side seam before, pulling up that facing away from the bodice, lining up my zip notch, lining up my hem, and pinning. And I'm going to stitch from the bottom of the facing to the notch of my zip with a long stitch length, and then at that notch, reduce my stitch length and sew right down to the hem. So starting with a back stitch, using that longer stitch length I mentioned, here's the notch at the bottom of my zip, back stitching, reducing my stitch length, starting again with a back stitch, right down to the hem, back stitching to finish. So that's how that looks. So now I need to press that seam open, which I've went ahead and done off camera. So you can see that here. And now I'm ready to pop in my zip. So I'm using a standard concealed zip and I'm just laying it right sides together with that press seam. Lining up the zip pull at the top and I'm going to tack this into place. And all of these steps are just going to ensure that my zip is sewn in nice and neatly, all in the correct place with no kinks. So starting at the zip pull, I'm just picking up a little bit of the zip and a little bit of that seam allowance in underneath and sewing some long tacking stitches the whole way down one side of the zip, finishing at my zip notch and doing exactly the same on the other side. So I'll finish that tacking off camera and this is how it looks. And now that that's done, I'm ready to remove the tacking stitches I sewed on the machine earlier. So just using my seam ripper here, opening up that centre back seam right down to the notch. And that then allows me to open the zip completely and stitch on the machine. So I'm using a regular zipper foot here. I'm making sure my needle is as close to those zipper teeth as I can get. Using a regular stitch length, back stitching at the start, trying to make sure that I'm not sewing into those zipper teeth. Taking it nice and easy here and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. And of course I do exactly the same to the other side. So you can see that here. So now that my zip is machine stitched on, I can remove those hand tacking stitches. And this is how my zip looks. Nice and neat and tidy. Everything's where it should be. And no kinks. So super happy with this. So now that that's done, I need to finish those seams off. And for this dress, I've decided on a bias finish. So I'm using my binding foot here and just some shop-bought bias tape. And I'm going to run that bias tape along the bottom of the zip, along the centre back seam, catching the zip at the same time, and also around the hem. And I'm starting here by finishing off the bottom of the zip. So that's how that looks. And now that whole centre back seam. So I've shown this a few times before, it's super easy to do this. You can check back at some of my older videos to see this in more detail, but essentially I'm just running the tape through the bias foot along with that seam allowance. And the foot here is wrapping that bias tape around the seam allowance, closing it all up nice and neatly. So this is how that looks. And again, I'll do exactly the same to the other side. And while I'm there, I'll also run that bias tape along the hem. And this is how it looks when it's all done. Super neat and tidy, I love this finish. 
so now I just have a couple more things to do before I can finish this dress and the first of which is to close up that facing at the centre back. So I'm just opening up that centre back seam, laying the facing on top right sides together and pinning. And stitching here just within my one centimetre seam allowance. Back stitching at the start and back stitching at the end. So I just need to trim off that excess bias and that little bit of zipper tape from the top, which is what I'm doing here. Fold my facing to the inside and this is how it looks. Super neat and tidy, everything's closed up as it should be. And now the second thing I need to do is to hand stitch that hem into place. So I'm using a silk thread here and a super fine needle and I'm just picking up a tiny bit of the fabric from the dress, a little bit of the bias tape, back down to the dress and up to the bias tape again. And repeating the whole way around the hem. And once it's all done and it's had a nice press, this is how it looks. So happy with that. So now the very last thing I have to do is just to tack down that facing at the side seams. So I'm just making sure that the seam of the facing is lined up with that side seam. And I'm stitching from the outside and I'm going to stitch in the ditch. Which just means I'm placing my needle directly in that side seam and making sure that I'm picking up that facing in underneath. This will just help that facing to stay nicely tucked away in underneath while I'm wearing the dress. And with that, this little dress is complete. So I have those gorgeous princess seams down the front. I've got my facing all in place, that lovely v-neck. Got my hem all nicely finished. And from the back, that gorgeous bias finish up the center back seam my facing all in place and from the outside those flounces all nicely lined and sandwiched in between those princess seams my zip all in place nice and neat and tidy and from the front that lovely V those super nice flounces and princess seams the whole way down with that gorgeous fluted hem and this is what it looks like on so I am super, super pleased with how this has turned out. I love everything about this. I love the fit. I absolutely love those flounces. I love the contrast between that purple and red. It just gives it a little bit of something extra. The V at the front and the back. I love the fluted hem. It's really, really comfortable to wear. And if you've been following over on Instagram, you will have seen on my stories my previous attempts at this design. So you'll know that this took a little bit to crack. But anyway, love how it turned out. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do. And I shall see you guys in my next one. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye folks!